Welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. Hey, you remember the band Aqua from like the 90s and early 2000s? Sure. You like Barbie Girl and everything? Yeah. Do you ever remember the song Back to the 80s? Vaguely. Because <laughs> literally the whole time I was writing notes on this, I kept singing it. <laughs> Only, but all I know is the chorus. So <laughs> just the chorus over and over. Wait, and what and is my, the chorus? I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it is it back to the yes, 80s? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. because this episode we're going back to our decades recurring segment and we're talking about the 80s. It was a pretty good decade, mm. I think so. Especially like mid-80s, <laughs> <laughs> like 85 specifically. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're silly. So, so silly. Before we get to that though, Brandon, what's your current nerd thing this week? Well, I think this is kind of both our nerd thing, oh. but... Uh, as we've said a few times, we're thinking about starting up a YouTube channel to go along with the podcast. By thinking about, do you mean have one where we've been also putting our podcast? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but like actually filming videos oh, and yes. stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we've put together a couple. Yeah. And we just filmed another segment yeah, today. Yeah. So. so we'll be uploading, we'll start uploading these pretty soon. I'm pretty thinking. soon. Yeah. yeah. We want to make sure we have enough to have weekly. Yes. Yeah. Content and, and I don't that. know if I've mentioned this or not, but June teacher mm-hmm. <laughs> time is time is a thing. <laughs> yeah, my my dirty looks per day have gone up <laughs> significantly. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, I take the quota of dirty lo- looks per day and I use them all in June. <laughs> Just like that's some advanced analytics. <laughs> dirty looks per day. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, it's a pretty good nerd thing. That's a lot happier than the way I'm spending my time Yeah. by myself, which is just marking. Oh, is Lots that your nerd thing? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like a happy nerd thing, but it is literally how I'm spending my time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. but I'm about to start, if you're listening to this on Monday, when it first is released, this is officially my last week of school. <gasps> oh, so actually that is a happy nerd thing. And it's, it is kind of happy and nerdy. It's always bittersweet when, like, the grade 12s go away and everything. They say graduate, and that's going on this week. So it's a whole lot of running around. Is it because some of the kids are bitter and some of them yes. are sweet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Surely. laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah, that's my nerd thing. I don't know. Just how I'm spending my time. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to have lots of videos to edit here coming up. You bet. So. That's basically been the idea. We've just been filming a bunch of stuff. So then once once school is done, we can start getting them out there. Um, and also, Brandon, what are you drinking? Well, it is a hot summer evening. It is. And we are out in the sun quite a bit, and I have a delicious gin and peach tonic. Yes. And it is refreshing. I, I think you have one as well. Uh, yes, we have the exact same thing, and I made them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all they're, they're, the they're tasty and thirst quenching, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very thirsty. Mm-hmm. And we had <sighs> pizza takeout tonight, and that doesn't help with being thirsty. Yes, so I think that's why I'm quite thirsty. Yes. Um, one more thing before we get to the news. Loki, episode two. Initial gut reaction, spoiler free. Brandon, what did you think? Whew. They're, oh. they're diving right in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's cool. I, yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's right up my alley. And uh, Owen Wilson is great. Isn't he fantastic They they, w- they work really well together, mm-hmm. so it's, it's fun. I like their dynamic. And I'm really curious to see. I mean, I feel like it's fast paced, but I guess if you only have six episodes, you only have so much time to play, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super fun. I'm really excited to see how it all comes together. And we will definitely be do, doing a spoiler filled episode once it's all all done. Yeah. Um, and I think that takes us to the news. Disney A News Update. Uh, you know, since things have started opening, I feel like I'm always saying, okay, lots of news. Okay, lots of news. Do you want to know why? Well, I mean, it's not not everything shut down and sadness and oh, misery. That, yeah. Right. yeah, okay. Mm. So first of all, I mentioned that we had pizza takeout, and that's because we decided to have a movie night. We watched Luca. Luca! Luca! We said we weren't going to be able to, and then our plans changed, so now we could. Yeah. Yay, it was exciting. What did you think? Spoiler free, of course. Spoiler free, um... It, well, it's a Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't... It's been going around on Twitter, actually, this last week. People ranking their top five Pixar movies. I don't know why it went, went viral. Um, we could probably do we an episode about that. that. <laughs> yeah. 
I wouldn't put that uh, up in that echelon. Like they, right. they have some like really highbrow. I was gonna ex- say that's quite the class to be in. Yeah, uh, it's it's a standard kids movie with a predictable plot, but it's got a really cool setting mm-hmm. and beautiful animation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it was super fun and summery, yeah. and it like good, made me happy. Good summer movie. Yeah, there are a couple interesting things I pointed out, but they're spoiler filled, so yeah. we're not gonna chat about them right now. But yes, you should definitely watch it. Last week we talked a lot about uh, June 15th and how those changes were going to be happening in the Disneyland parks. And, uh, yeah, they happened. (laughs) Boy, did they ever. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, restrictions? Um, What? What restrictions? Restrictions. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're we're about two weeks away um, Mm -hmm. from that around here. They they made the announcement today Today. that they're going to be chucking restrictions out. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to be the first province to do such a thing and... People are clutching their pearls a little bit um, <laughs> about that. Some are, some people are really excited too. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm in the middle. Yeah. Uh, a little apprehensive, but I, I think also optimistic. So. Yeah, I think I'm right there with you in the middle. Um, I'm excited. I'm happy for it. I think people don't always make wise choices when <laughs> give, left to their own devices, but I'm hopeful. And, yeah, so, um, I guess that's another nerd thing. We booked our second doses. We did, yeah. That's pretty nerdy, but yay science. <laughs> yay science. Four, um, four days from this episode dropping, right. so, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, back to June 15th, uh, maskless now. Well, you can wear masks. And in the videos we've been watching, uh, there's been a number that are wearing masks. Well, and I don't really blame them. There's a lot of people. <laughs> and you don't, you don't know who's... Yep. Vaccinated or yeah. got a tickle in their throat. Like, I don't know. So, yeah. I, yeah. The social distancing markers are gone. A lot of the plexiglass stuff is gone. The cast members are still masked and with shields. Um, at least for now, I've heard that as, you know, th- that they are going to be dropping those as well. Uh, the, it, they might make it not mandatory. Yes, yeah. Optionally. for the, And only for those who are fully vaccinated. Um, but yeah, it's, it looks pretty normal in those videos and it's a little crazy to see actually. They have done again their first official rope drop. And that was crowded. Holy, yeah. So there's, there's a whole lot of excitement about all that. And part of that is a whole lot more stuff is opening and being announced. So fireworks are back people. Almost. In Disneyland, they're going to be back on July 4th for Independence Day, and Disney World is going to be back on the 1st of July. I guess they're celebrating Canada Day or something. Ah, Yeah, maybe in the Epcot Canadian Pavilion. Yeah, Yeah, do that, do that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it it makes more sense to bring it back July 4th, but I mean... Eh. It's like, whatever, they can practice for a couple days. Exactly. Soft fireworks opening. Yeah. Okay, and then also, um, Disney Parks blog has come out with a all of the foodie news because a whole lot more restaurants and places are opening now. Uh, staff's trained up and ready to go you and bet. cook your churro or <laughs> whatever else you want. Okay, are you ready for the list? Okay. Okay. Rapid fire. Disneyland Park. E- e- so these are either open by the time you hear this or opening within like a few days. Yeah. Okay. Tiki Juice Bar. Rancho... Rancho del Zocalo. I can't say that very fast. <laughs> Rancho del Zocalo! I was trying to do rapid fire. I fell on the second one. Alien Pizza Planet, Ogus Cantina, Docking Bay 7, Maurice's Treats, and Edelweiss Snacks. Those are all opening either the 17th or the 24th. In Disney's California Adventure, we have Wine Country T- Trattoria, Mendocino Terrace, Bayside Brews, Lamplight Lounge, um, Brunch and uh, Dining, Jack Jack Cookie Num Nums and Cozy Cone Motel. Are you laughing at me? Say Jack Jack Cookie Num Num <laughs> and the Cozy Cone Motel. So all of those are going to be opening again either the 17th or the 24th. Some of them had um, soft openings, so they've already kind of been open. Some of them have only been doing mobile and will be opening like other aspects to it. So, but yes, it's starting to look pretty normal. So that Trattoria in Disney California Adventure, I wonder if they're going to have anything special for Luca. They should. They should. They that's totally just, should. That's, that's an it easy fits. crossover. Oh, yeah. This, it's a thing. Come yeah. on. They don't even try with that. Mm. Disney, I keep saying, we've got ideas here. <laughs> Hire us. <laughs> um, speaking of California Adventure, you know how I said there was a new Loki character? Changed him. Again, to fit with... Episode two. Updating his costume to what he wore in episode two. It makes sense. Exactly. Very cool. 
And one last, more Disney Plus related news. There's going to be a Pride concert hosted by Disney Plus, and it's featuring Nina West, Holly Kiyoko, Todd Hall, and Kermit the Frog. Hey, I know Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Those, are, those other people I, I do not know. Um, I didn't until I looked at pictures, and I was like, oh, okay, I actually have seen them before. Yeah, I, 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 I'm assuming they're music people, and, and that's kind yeah, of my blind sort spot. Of, sort of. They're like entertainers. Mm. But hey, Kermit the Frog. So that is going to be broadcast on both YouTube and uh, like the Disney Facebook page. And it's called This Is Me Pride Celebration Spectacular. It says this concert will feature performances of popular Disney songs reinterpreted through an LGBTQ plus lens and will air on the Disney plus Facebook and YouTube pages on Sunday, June 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Interesting. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. I'd be curious to see what that means like what that looks like yeah. right? yeah so disney i'm very songs. curious yeah i'm huh. curious reinterpreted disney song that's interesting yeah. yeah so of course this is in honor of um june being pride month mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's kind of like a as the month wraps up nice to do a celebration and i'm curious to see what they do with it I very th- cool very cool so i think that takes us to our main topic yeah i think so disney plus and chill <laughs> Okay, so, 1980s. Big decade. Yeah. Holy Disney changes. All right. We have a very long list of movies to talk about, and this is not even half of them. These are, these are like, the heavy hitters. They, they were busy. I mean, the movie industry itself changed quite a bit in mm-hmm. the 80s as well. So It's true. So, if you listen to our 70s episode, we talked about how Disney was in the process of shifting. They were looking to more... Um, mature themes, and that was kind of in response to big movies like, say, Star Wars and Jaws in the 70s, and Disney kind of wanted a piece of that action. So they did a lot of changing in in terms of their movies. Um, before we get to any of that, though, I just kind of wanted to run through a little bit of what else was going on in the Disney company. Okay. Because a lot of that informs the movies. Yes, it, and it's an interesting documentary subject. It really is. The boardroom battles of the Disney <laughs> company. <laughs> and... The 80s were such a decade for that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so this is kind of cool. These are some highlights of the 80s. The first Disney home videos were released, which, of course, we grew up with. Oh, those big white cases. Yeah, yeah. I I have a bunch. Oh, (laughs) I I think I have a couple as well. Yep. We've got Epcot opening. Um, The Coca-Cola company unsuccessfully tried to buy Disney in the early 80s, speaking of boardroom battles. Can you imagine what that would be like? (sighs) Uh, I don't. I don't think Disney would really exist probably right? anymore. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna get back to other companies trying to buy Disney in the '80s. So the Disney Channel begins broadcasting. That's pretty cool. Tokyo Disneyland opens in '83. Did you know that opened in '83? I thought it was way more recent than that. I, I actually, I kind of thought it was in the '80s, but like late eight, like mm. '89. Oh, I would have okay. guessed if, yeah. if if you had put me on the spot in a trivia contest. Yeah, that's really early. I should have put that in trivia. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have a new Fantasyland at Disneyland. They redid, renovated all of Fantasyland. Uh, Touchstone Films and mm. Hollywood Pictures label both come out in the 80s. So basically the idea was this was the way to kind of appeal to mature audiences, be owned by Disney, but not have the Disney name on it. And there's, in fact, like they even came out with a rated R movie. <sighs> but it wasn't a Disney one. Right, yeah. It was a Disney company one. So yeah. there was a gray area there. Mm-hmm. So the idea there was Touchstone Films was for more mature audiences and Hollywood Pictures was as well, but they kind of focused more comedy-wise was the essential idea there. Um, after another near buyout, Roy E. Disney removed then-CEO Ron Miller and replaced with Michael Eisner mm, and that, Frank Wells. That, that. That sounds like a familiar name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Eisner actually became the first person with no personal connection to Walt to lead Walt Disney Productions, which also in the 80s changed its name to Walt Disney Studio. And they began making cartoons for TV in the 80s, and oh boy, did they. <laughs> Man, 80s were awesome for cartoons. Yes. Mm-hmm. Captain EO opened in Disneyland. The first Disney store opened in... <laughs> Did you ever see Captain EO? I didn't, actually. Oh, Did you? No, because no, it wasn't in Disney World. Yeah. Um, the first Disney store opened in 87. It opened in California. That's <laughs> probably not shocking to you. Star Tours opens, and it always throws me that this opened in the 80s. No, that I knew, for sure. Okay, well, here's yeah. here's another one that opened in the 80s that also throws me. Splash Mountain. That, yeah. 
Splash Mountain seems like it should have been 70s for sure. Right. Um, it's just so intrinsic to the park and yeah, and one it, of the mountains, like, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah and it, it made news again because a certain someone who should probably know history about Disneyland said that it's over 60 years old. It's not over 60 years old. Mm. <laughs> but maybe he meant the attractions in him from, like, America Sings or something. Sure. Okay, we'll go with that. In 1988, this is kind of cool, two big things happened. First of all, the, there was Walt Disney Computer Software established. That's very 80s. <laughs> all I can see is, like, one of those big, like, bad commercials or something like that. And it was the first time that Disney led the box office. Yeah. And not the last. <laughs> that's that's an uncommon thing these days. <laughs> it's funny because it's not. <laughs> Um, other things that opened in the 80s, Disney MGM Studios, Pleasure Island, Typhoon Lagoon, all open in Disney World. Uh, there was talks with Jim Henson chatting with Disney about acquiring the Muppets. That all fell apart when um, Jim Henson died in 1990. But that tells you that those talks were in place a long time ago. Yeah. The, yeah. The Muppets and Disney were, were close for a while, mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Hollywood Records was established in 1989, and they produced a whole bunch of music and of course owned by disney 89 was also the year that the disney renaissance started which would we can talk about more when we talk movies and also the, where the reason that they needed to have a renaissance started <laughs> why is that well i mean we've talked about it before but the horrible miserable miserable failure of the black cauldron yeah so. that's definitely on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so before we get because i think we'll talk more animated but i do want to um, go through some of the live action that is probably worth mentioning. Sure. Okay. Popeye. Have you ever seen Popeye? I, I, I used to watch the Popeye cartoon all the time, but I have not seen the live <gasps> action with, it looks Whoa, no, awful. I love it. It's yeah. fantastic. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I'm really worried it didn't age well. I, but it looks pretty bad Robin to me. Williams, yeah. come on. I don't know. Come on. Don't Robin know. Williams shows up a few times on this list, by the way. Yes. Speaking of the 80s, Tron. Mm. Mm-hmm. Original Tron. Something Wicked This Way Comes. I actually haven't seen this. But I wanted to mention it because Ray Bradbury wrote the book for Something Wicked This Way Comes. And Ray Bradbury was connected to Disney. He helped design Tomorrowland mm. originally. Which makes sense, like yeah. Like 50s Tomorrowland, yeah. So I was like, that was kind of cool. Let's go back to 50s Tomorrowland. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit more Ray Bradbury mm -hmm. here, how about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, Never Cry Wolf, Splash... Return to Oz. <laughs> yeah. So Return to Oz we talked about on our Halloween episode. So you probably want to listen to that. The Journey of Natty Gann. Do you know why I put this on the list? Okay. Why? I've never seen it. We probably should. It was filmed here. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I have seen it. I don't I don't really remember it. Yeah. So, it was yeah. filmed like in this town. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. So I guess if you know where Na the Journey of Natty Gann is, you know where we live. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, Flight of the Navigator. Uh, there was a couple of the Ernest movies that came like culty, always on TV all the time. So those came out in the 80s. Adventures in Babysitting, which always strikes me as a super, super 80s movie. Yeah, it was very 80s. I used to quite like it, too, <laughs> I did, too. I watched it a lot. <laughs> and Can't Buy Me Love is also very 80s. Three Men and a Baby, Return to Snowy River, which I always loved because horses. Good Morning Vietnam. Cocktail. Dead Poet Society, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Did you ever get to ride Honey, I Shrunk the Audience? I did, yes. Did it, you like it? I, I did. Yeah, I really liked it, too. I thought it was seriously underrated. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Um, I like stuff like that. I they believe, used to do a few of those things, and now I, nothing. I believe it was in Disney World when I wrote mm. it. Yeah, it was gone wrote from it. Yeah, it was gone from Disneyland when we were there. Yeah, so, must yeah. have been then. Yeah. I, yeah, very underrated attraction, but I can see it was never busy when I was in there. No, but no. But it should have been. And it was, it was a, good. It was a huge theater, so it didn't... Yeah. I get the space yeah. situation. Yeah. But a lot of fun. Um, beaches and Down and Out in Beverly Hills, which I've never seen, but I wanted to mention it because this is the first one that was rated R that was released. Mm. And I think it was released by Touchstone. So... That, that's not even half of <laughs> the live action ones. Just some ones that I was like, oh, that's interesting. Cool. But we have some other notables. 
Yes, I mean, the big ones are the animated. Yep, and I have a little other category here, because there's one that doesn't really fit into either. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that one separately, but um, just a couple little shout-outs here. Did you know a super successful television show that Disney produced on one of their channels was The Golden Girls? I, I did not know that, but... Uh... Technically, The Golden Girls are Disney. They're Disney princesses. Betty, Betty White is a Disney princess? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I want her officially instated as a Disney princess. I, I, I would vote for that, right? for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Um, and Mickey's Christmas Carol. We talked about this during our Christmas episode, and it did come out in the 80s. Um, it's a short, so it didn't make the list of the animated features or anything like that, but I just wanted to mention it because it's a, it's a good classic it's, Christmassy movie. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty cute little... It's cute. It's short. ...telling of, of yeah. the Christmas Carol story in a, in a short Mickey Mouse type of way. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's happy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, animated. This is, I think, in order of release, The Fox and the Hound. That's... That's a sneaky good film. That could have been on the underrated. It could have been on the underrated lens. That often, the only time I ever see that mentioned is when you're talking about, like, saddest Disney moments. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, Todd. Yeah. He's just in the, when, in the mirror looking at her as she drives away, going, why are you leaving me? It, yeah. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So sad. But, yes, that's a, it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's cute. And it's cute. And uh, you know probably why it gets forgotten about? Because you know what came after that? Black Cauldron. Yeah. <laughs> In fact... The infamous Black Cauldron. Yeah. Basically, the Black Cauldron not only overshadowed the Fox and the Hound, but it overshadowed the one that came after that. But let's just talk Black Cauldron here for a minute. Okay. We just rewatched this a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't remember it being very good, and it was worse than I remembered it being. See, I always liked it as a kid because it was a fantasy thing, and, mm-hmm. and and it was dark, and it was dark. the 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 villain was scarier than your standard mm-hmm. uh, standard Disney. I actually f- like the villain. Yeah, um, and I like kid playing with the sword and and all that. But like the plot's a mess. Oh man, is it ever? You'd think I'd like it. There's a magic pig. Yeah, there's a I magic pig, pigs. but you see him for ten minutes at the start of the movie, and then and then the pig's gone. Well, they, like, find him a couple times. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's a mess because they took a big, long story and, like, chopped it up into little bits and, yeah. and tried to stitch it together again, and it... It, it did not work. Didn't work, no. Which is a shame, because they actually could have done something cool with it had it been in different hands. Yeah. Or had more care. I don't know what it was, but it is a mess. The pacing is all over the place. The story does not make sense. The characters are, like, I, I don't know. People either love it or hate it. Like, there is a small contingent where it's, like, almost cult favorite. Well, it does have really cool animation. It does. <laughs> but it is probably the most forgotten about Disney movie because it's also a mess. <laughs> it is a mess, yes. So it definitely overshadowed Fox and the Hound. I'd say it also overshadowed the movie that came, the next animated movie on the list, which is The Great Mouse Detective. Which was on my underrated movie and list. And mine. Yes, both mm-hmm. of ours. Yes. Um, yeah, it's too bad because they, they did a really great job they with really Great did. Mouse Detective. Ha. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Um, and <laughs> yeah, it's it's mostly forgotten about because it's not a princess movie. And but there are other not princess movies. This just I don't know wrong wrong time or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I mean Sherlock Holmes stories have been told again and again. Mm, yeah, so but not maybe, by cute little mice. It kind of gets lost in that as well. I I guess so. Yeah, but you know what? They've been popular every time they've been told too. I yeah, mean, like, and this I is... love the show Sherlock. Like with Benedict Cumberbatch. And this is popular. Yeah, no, it, it's it's on the underrated list consistently. Mm-hmm. It's not like completely forgotten about. It's just like, it's, yeah, it's just not the small it's super popular thing in the world. Not yeah. appreciated as much as it should be. Mm. Professor Radigan is awesome, <laughs> and Felicia, and there's a burlesque mouse show. <laughs> Yeah, stripper mouse is kind of weird. She's not a stripper. She's a singer and performer. Right, right. She didn't take off any clothes. Yeah, okay. But You just didn't see that evening. Right? I guess. <laughs> it was she, casual Friday. It was, so. it was. Uh, but yes, there is that, which is interesting. And you get to see Dr. I guess he's Dobson in this one. Have too much sherry. Mm. <laughs> 
Yeah, you probably wouldn't have that in a kid's movie anymore. No. And there's smoke everywhere oh, in it. Yeah. Definitely can't have you can't have that in an adult's movie it's anymore. That's true. <laughs> that's that's a fast way to get a rated R movie is have cigarettes. Yep. Oh yeah. But I've definitely underrated, definitely awesome. Too bad Black Cauldron overshadowed it. Yeah. And then we had another seriously underrated movie that makes a lot of people's lists. It didn't make ours. Maybe should have, I'm not sure, but that is Oliver and Company. Great music. Billy Joel did the music for this. Yeah. And, and that, it's super 80s. <laughs> Billy Joel is the star of Oliver and Company. It's true, but um, also cute little animals. Yeah. And the, the story's fine. The animation's not great. Um, you it, can tell they were in their budget cutting phase. Like, they were apparently in their budget cutting phase for Great Mouse Detective, but it didn't suffer as much well, as Oliver Well, they were Oliver also Co- apparently in their budget cutting phase for the next one we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah. And that didn't suffer I, at all. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but Oliver and Company, yes. Um, this is another one. I guess they tried Great Mouse Detective and figured, let's go classic lit one more time. Right. Because it's a retelling of Oliver Twist. And with dogs. With, and cat. And a cat. <laughs> I love Oliver and Company. This is it's, always a, a fond favorite growing up. It's fu- it's fine. <laughs> it's No, it's a good one. It's a goodie. And yes, the music is fantastic. I, every time I watch it, I'm just like, oh, this makes me happy. <laughs> But yes, another forgotten one. Now that might be because of what came next, which was The Little Mermaid. Now mentioned Disney Renaissance started, it was really big in the 90s, but it technically started with The Little Mermaid, and that was 89. Yeah. Also apparently in the budget cutting phase, however, you know, this did not suffer. Yeah, there's some great shots in Little Holy, Mermaid. it's beautiful. Especially the underwater yes, things. Yes, definitely. And classic, classic Disney. Like... yeah. I mean, it used to be you'd think classic Disney was like Cinderella and Snow White and things like that. But now classic Disney is Little Mermaid and also things that came later. In the the 90s, yeah. Yeah, Um. which is concerning to me. (laughs) (laughs) But Little Mermaid is quintessential Disney. I quite quite enjoyed Little Mermaid Mm -hmm. growing up, so yeah. um. Yeah. I always loved Little Mermaid. I mean, every girl in every pool ledge ever nah. <laughs> did the make yeah laugh. i didn't do that but i i could appreciate little mermaid it, yeah it didn't bother me at all and well it's i've watched it many times even as an adult and i still think it's beautiful and also some of the best music in any disney movie period yeah there's some good sa- yeah. songs yeah definitely and i liked that ariel was like spunky and she wasn't just completely passive this was the first disney princess movie we had in a while that's like full out princess Watching it as an adult, though, <laughs> I'm like, wow, you sound exactly like a 16-year-old, <laughs> which is accurate. Maybe don't go get married. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yes, there's some problems that way. <laughs> but I get context and everything, and yeah. But So I identify less with Ariel and maybe a little more with King Triton or, like you said, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the adult test. Watch Little Mermaid and see if you identify with a Little Mermaid or her father, who's not wrong. <laughs> It's true. But I still like her, and I just, it's a whole lot of fun. And you cannot be in a bad mood listening to that soundtrack. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, there's some good songs. Yes. So we have another one we want to talk about. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the other category. The other category. But before we talk about the other yes. category, which is the mishmash doesn't fit, let's take a commercial break for our friends who are listening on Magic of the Mouse Radio. All right, so... Okay, the other category. The other category. The other category, other, other category. Yes. Yes. I have a category in these notes that says other because it's not animated and, and, and it's not live action. It's both. Yeah. So we saw this with um, other ones we've talked about in the past would be like Mary Poppins or Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Well, the 80s had its own version, which is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it's the best one. It's awesome yeah um i have a hard time replacing mary poppins with- so i'm not saying that who framed roger rabbit is better than mary poppins although it is they're, they're different <laughs> um the animation added to mary poppins was just like a garnish whereas yes. the animation added to who framed roger rabbit was like intrinsic to the plot That's very true and like very important to that movie so, i will 100 yeah. percent give you this um and they had the Warner Brothers Mm -hmm. Disney crossover in it. Scandalous. Which (laughs) is just crazy. You wouldn't see that today. Nope, nope. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, no. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is just amazing. (laughs) Would it make your list of top ten favorite Disney movies? Oh, 
Definitely. Would it make your list of top five favorite Disney movies? Probably. Top three? Oh, I don't know. You'd Maybe. You'd have to make the list. <laughs> Maybe. I, but yeah. probably top five. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I like it. It is, I mean, I always liked this one growing up too, but I like it probably even more as an adult, actually. I th- I think it's one of the rare ki- kids' movies that is actually better for adults. Yeah. When you watch it as a kid, you're going to be like, oh, look at these cartoon characters, mm-hmm. and there's some funny stuff and things like that. But it's, yeah, the story works for adults as well, if not better. Yeah. 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 It works well, on a lot there, of different there levels. There's lots of adult jokes. Like, oh, yeah. Like... You mean the character of Jessica Rabbit? <laughs> yes, of course. And, like, the whole thing with patty cake. Like, yeah. <laughs> kids wouldn't understand that. That was really funny. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> okay, and another seriously underappreciated movie. Especially nowadays. Like, it was big when it came out. Oh, yes. And... Now you have a ride in Disneyland that people are like, what the heck is this? Yeah, what's Roger Rabbit? Yeah. In the 80s, um, or was it the 90s, uh, you know how they had the sing-along songs in the 90s? But they had a day at Disneyland or Disneyland fun or something. And they had different Disney characters, like the mascots, taking you through Disneyland stuff. They even had Roger Rabbit as one of the main characters there with mm-hmm. like... Goofy and Donald yeah, no, and stuff it was, like that. It was big for like five years and then just yeah. crashed and burned. Mm. I don't know. It's Let's sad. talk a little bit about this movie, just because it's so different from everything else, and I know particularly fond of it. Okay. Okay, so you said that the plot is it's in, relies on the fact that there's animated and live action. So, like, what do you mean by this? Pretend I've never seen the movie. <laughs> well, okay, so it's it's like a classic film noir with a, a private investigator that mm-hmm. has, like, a dark past. But his dark past involves interacting with cartoon characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, this is the, the origin of Toontown, which we have talked about before. Not Mickey's uh, Toontown, but yep. actual Toontown, where the animated characters come from, and then they, they cross over a, a tunnel and come into L.A., and right. they, like, exist in a, in a world with people. Yeah. And they're, like, paid actors in <laughs> in their animated shows. That was clever. Absolutely. It, it, it's just it's just really good. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, little nods to different things. I mean, even though it, like, it's, it's a film noir, so it takes place in, like, old Hollywood. So there's a lot of nods to that as well. There's, yeah, it works on a lot of different levels. And it's super fun. Also, Christopher Lloyd is in it, who's fantastic yes. as everything. <laughs> creepy, creepy dude. Yes, he does that well, though. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. This is a great movie. Um, so before we get to trivia and all that crazy stuff, just looking through, I kind of want to ask you, you don't know I was going to do this. I just wanted to ask you favorites from different things. Okay. So we had a live action category and an animated, well, I know what your animated one's going to be, but let's just, <laughs> let's just do it anyway. Um, what would be your favorite live action from this list? And I understand you haven't seen them all, but just what would be, what stands out to you? Um, Tron, Tron was definitely up there, mm-hmm. um, but I think it has to be Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I Great choice. Absolutely loved Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, and Canadian Connection. Yeah. Yeah. So Rick Moranis, who's the dad who shrunks his shrunks he shrunk some he, sh- he shrunk some real <laughs> good <laughs> it's true to have a teacher leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> who shrinks his kids um is canadian and awesome he is awesome yeah. Every, everybody loves rick moranis it's true that is that's absolutely accurate okay i'm uh i'm actually surprised you didn't go tron so i like that answer well yeah, uh, tron's up there and it's just like uh the grandfather of, of CGI in, yeah. in movies and stuff like that, so that's really important. But uh, what about you? What what is mm-hmm. your favorite <laughs> live action? Well, on the, this is on this tough. There's Disney some list. seriously favorite ones here. Did you know Splash was the first live action one released um, on video? Not a trivia question. So. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> but I really liked that one. I mean, that was height of Tom Hanks rom com kind of era. Well, no, I guess that came a little bit later, but this was the start of it. The start of it, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I can't say as I've ever seen Splash, and I don't intend to, so... He falls in love with a mermaid. Yeah, I, I know the plot. <laughs> and then a few years later, Little Mermaid happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, okay, so I like that one, uh, Return to Oz, but, man, you know, I'm hmm, I'm torn. I was thinking Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, too, actually. I think I might go Dead Poet Society, though. Yeah, okay. That yeah, ma- that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, speaking of Robin Williams, t- teacher. Yeah, I actually um, that's one of the ones I do a film study on every year. 
Yeah, that's that's a favorite one, and not just because I've had definitely walked into a room and had students Wait. standing on the desks before. <laughs> yes, you have. Um, <laughs> but back up. Yeah. Did you say you were going to put Return to Oz as one of your favorites? I said it had a special place in my heart because <laughs> I used to watch it all the time as a kid. Yeah. So. <laughs> You don't have to bring back your childhood traumas as a <laughs> as a, a favorite tra- thing. It's not a trauma. I Ugh. liked it as a kid. It is so bad. Oh, and Beaches. I used to watch Beaches a lot, too. Um, Did you ever know that you're my hero? Everything? Uh, <laughs> I would like... I'm not going to say anymore. Okay. Um, good for you, <laughs> But definitely, I I, I'm going to say Dead Poet Society. There's some, there's some winners on here, though. Yeah. Okay, Animated. I can't believe you're thinking about it. Uh, You're going to be shocked, but it's actually (gasps) The Little Mermaid. I am shocked. I 100% thought you were going to go Great Mouse Detective. Great Mouse Detective is super, super underrated, but Little Mermaid is just a better movie. It's got great music, and it's just classic, classic Disney. I've mentioned a few times that next Halloween we're going to be ranking villains, because we haven't done that yet, and now I kind of just want to (laughs) wait. Ursula's going to be, if she's not at the top of our list, she's going to be in, like, near the top, because my God, is she awesome. She's (laughs) awesome. And I think they're probably making one of those goofy villain prequels about her. I think so. (laughs) If not... If not, I feel like she would be in line for one. I th- I think they are. Do you think so? I think I think I've read headlines of like them trying to cast like hmm. Melissa McCarthy in it or something like that. Hmm. I because I heard another one that they're thinking about doing is Jafar. Yeah. Uh-huh. He he was the worst part of the live action reboot of Aladdin. Do you know? Well, you know the one that's coming next is Gaston. And personally, I'm like, I don't... Know They're making I, a Disney Plus series. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I need to know his story, but I mean, like, I'm cool finding out about, like, the world, I guess. But yeah, Ursula, I'm not... I, I don't know. I don't know if I, I think, know or not. I think she could have an interesting one, because she... Well, she was kind of evil to the Little Mermaid, Ariel. Yeah. Um, she, I, I don't... I think she probably just butted heads with Triton and got tossed out on her butt because she was a strong-headed lady. Yeah. And so then got bitter about it. So I could okay. see that actually working as a story where it's not, right. she's not like skinning puppies or anything. Hey, they made that work. And sort of. Well, I think they made it work. <laughs> they made it work as like, let's watch this, don't think too hard about the connection, mm-hmm. <laughs> connecting details here. But they made it work as a moving into, into and unto itself. Yeah, I could, I could see if they did it well. I'm just, I'm very fond of her <laughs> as a villain, a villainess. And I kind of don't want that to get messed up yeah but i'm pretty good at separating them yeah i'm pretty good it's at just for fun but it would be cool um i know i like she alludes to the conflict she had with triton so yeah. maybe it'd be interesting to see that maybe she's just a savvy businesswoman i mean these people signed contracts knowing what they were getting into that's right she told her exactly what was going on <laughs> yeah, and all the little creatures i mean it wasn't a good contract, but read the contract, and they all. It wasn't the fine print or anything. Yeah. She sang a whole song about it, <laughs> and her little garden of other yeah. rare people. Yeah, I'm sure she, she probably sang songs for all of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's quite a diva, so I'm sure she did. I, absolutely. <laughs> she actually has bleachers where she makes them sit. <laughs> See, Ariel was like royalty, so she got like a front row seat. Mm, the rest of them had to sit. Right. And yeah, so she's. People knew what they were getting into. It's not her fault they didn't read the contract. Mm. So, yeah, maybe. It's just I don't ca- know. It's just capitalism at work. Exactly. I don't know. Melissa McCarthy would be pretty cool, actually, in this. I think I... Maybe I'm just, like, dreamt that or something. Maybe it's wishful thinking. I don't know. Interesting. I, I don't know. Interesting. Well, in our other category, you're going to say who framed Roger Rabbit, because the only other thing really in there was Mickey's Christmas Carol. <laughs> so. Cool. Yeah. All right, so that was a pretty short one as far as the 80s went. Yeah, we went through it pretty quick. Well, but, there was uh, so much that I was like, let's speed through. Right. Yeah. Well, well that's okay. That, that's okay. I've got some tough trivia for you now. Oh, okay. We haven't done trivia in a while because we were doing Q&A and things like that. Um, I did hear from a couple people about our uh, Canadian Disneyland, though, by oh, the way, yeah. which is what we did instead of Q&A last week. I did enjoy Imagineering that one. Yes, except when we stopped recording i was like oh and i forgot at oh and i forgot at. yes i i do have some more ideas mm-hmm. mainly revolving around a marvel land okay um featuring wolverine yeah uh, everyone's favorite canadian x-man x man yeah. x-man yeah <laughs> question mark <laughs> yeah wolverine's cool. from canada that's true you yeah. were wolverine kind of for halloween last year <laughs> 
Go on Instagram. You can see pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Off-brand crappy uh, Wolverine. Yeah, that was actually the costume. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice segue, actually. We usually do this in a little bit, but if you want to hear more about Canadian-type content in Disney, we'll be talking about that more next episode. Right. Because it's just before Canada Day. Canada Day. Yeah, eh? Yeah, eh? Yeah, eh? The one thing that I did hear, someone said they were waiting for, like, a Finding Nemo frozen (laughs) version. Like, everything's in ice because it's cold here. (laughs) Ice fishing, Finding Nemo. It's like like they're frozen fish sticks. (laughs) (laughs) The fish don't actually freeze. The, the ice just goes over top of them, and then they can swim below the ice. They could go ice fishing and then, like, yeah. pull up Dory or whatever, and she could talk, and it could be a whole well, interactive I, I, thing. I, like, all the fish from Finding Nemo are um, tropical fish. So they, oh, prob- they would not do well. They would not they do would well. They would freeze. Yeah, they would, they, they would just die. Yeah. Yes, okay. And they're also from salt water, so. Also that, yeah. right. Well, I mean, okay. we have oceans on either side, but we're far away f- from them, so. Yeah, it's true. We're back to trivia this week. Okay, yes. Well, I mean... It, Disney movies are ripe for trivia, and yep. 80s is ripe for trivia decades, so... That... And I was really excited to ask you trivia. <laughs> yeah, you just you really wanted to go back to trivia this week, so we are. Okay, perfect. All right, here we go. Three questions for you, shockingly all about the 80s. In 1981, Disney's first animated home video was released. What was the film chosen to be released first? Mom was video. it animated? Yes. Um, Snow White. Okay. Good guess. Yeah, I don't know. Makes sense. <laughs> 1985, good year. Yeah. It was a great year. It was also the first Disney Saturday morning cartoons. What? There are two options here. The first day they aired, what were the two shows that they started with? Um, I, 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 Just think 80s cartoons. M- Mickey Mouse and Friends. Think TV series made for Disney Channel in the 80s. Yeah, there was lots. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. DuckTales. Okay. Woo. <laughs> All right. And number three. Little Mermaid. Well, it's both of our favorite animated ones. It won the Academy Award for Best Original Score and Best Original Song. Which song won? Uh, it's got to be Part of Your World, probably. Uh, I don't know. That's okay. what I would have picked, but... I, there's a lot like there's or, so many good ones under there. the sea is also a very strong option um but i mean part of your world's a big ballad and that's usually what wins right uh, under the sea is probably a better song yeah i don't know you're gonna go part of your world or under the sea one of those two <laughs> no, pick one <laughs> you don't think it's poor unfortunate souls no it's a great villain song I, I, it is it's one of those it's two. probably the best I, I, song. i'll go part of your world and then, okay. and then you're gonna be like ha ha it's under the sea ha 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 Okay. All right. So that about wraps it up. If you think you know the answers to these questions, maybe slightly better than Brandon. D- or Dick Van all, Dyke. Then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the Dick Van Dyke show? Oh, no, wait. That no, was live action. That was live action. <laughs> yes, as animated. Uh, you can contact us on your social media or through our website to chat. Oh, you can also suggest trivia. We don't get that often, but you can suggest trivia. Yeah. Yeah. Or just to say hi. 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 Hi there. But that's our show for today. Thanks to El Mule, who is responsible for the awesome custom theme song you heard at the top of the show. You can find a link to his work at our website, disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. And you can also find us on social media, Instagram at disneya.podcast, on Facebook at DisneyA, and Twitter at DisneyA Podcast. You can find Disney A episodes on your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can listen to our newest episodes on our new YouTube channel, dun, 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 dun. Adventures A. A. We changed the name a little bit because we're going to go on some adventures. Yeah, but if you search Disney A, you will find it yeah. under Adventures A as well. <laughs> <laughs> they are linked. So please review our podcast, especially on Apple Podcast, and subscribe. If you know someone else who might like listening to this podcast, mm-hmm. be sure to recommend Disney A to them. Mm-hmm. You can also listen to Disney A episodes on Magic of the Mouse Radio, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. You can listen to Magic of the Mouse Radio on Live 365, MyTuner Radio, Radio Garden, and other radio station apps. You can also listen to sounds and music of Disneyland on Magic of the Mouse Radio. So join us next week when we get all patriotic. Do, 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 do. That was my O Canada. Mm.
<laughs> lovely. It was like almost MIDI in, in quality. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to chat all about how to celebrate Canada Day Disney style. Oh, yeah, eh? How many times have I made the A joke this episode? Uh, probably t- too many. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> We've got ideas. Oh, y- you have ideas. I have ideas. Also, I, it links really well with some of the chats we had about, like, Disneyland Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if, if you, maybe some things stem from that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Brandon. And I'm Krista, and until that next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney, A. Eh? Technically, the Golden Girls are Disney. They're Disney princesses. Betty, Betty White is a Disney princess. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs>